In this video, we are going to step away from the patient assessment topic and discuss lifting and moving patients. This will be an integral component of your job as an EMT, and if performed incorrectly, can lead to long-term injury and disability. We're going to discuss your body position, the position of your patient, how to use a stretcher using a stair chair, long spine board, and a scoop stretcher, and various drags and hand carries. As mentioned previously, lifting a patient incorrectly can result in serious injury to you or your patient if you drop them. Lift with a straight back using your legs. The position to lift from is essentially a squat. Any lift that extends your back or involves reaching could result in injury. Knowing when to ask for help is also extremely important. Some patients may require additional resources before lifting, and it's important not to let pride result in an injury, so ask for more help. This isn't important enough that these proper lifting techniques are emphasized as each lift is discussed. The predominant method of patient movement is via an ambulance stretcher. This can also be called a pram, cot, gurney, or bed, but regardless, are all operated the same way. The stretcher has four wheels and can be adjusted up and down, and its length can be shortened for tight spaces. The feet end of the stretcher may be elevated in Trendelenburg position, and some stretchers allow for the feet end to collapse, placing the patient in a fully seated position. Whenever lifting a stretcher, the technician should bend at the knees into the squatting position and keep their back straight so they are not injured. Use the muscles in your legs and buttocks to lift or lower a stretcher. Some modern stretchers are powered and can lift and lower with the touch of a button. Remember, the stretcher must be operated by two personnel at all times while loaded with a patient, and lowered to a hip height while moving a patient. As a stretcher bears weight, its center of gravity becomes more important for preventing a tip over, hence keeping it low to the ground and stabilized. The person at the head of the stretcher pushes while the person at the foot end of the stretcher pulls and or steers. The patient should be secured using all available seatbelts on the stretcher, including over the shoulder harnesses. Using these seatbelts ensures patient safety while being moved on the stretcher and while being transported in the ambulance. See the stretcher skills video for more information on operating the stretcher and loading and unloading it from the ambulance. The next patient moving device is a stair chair, which is a special chair with handles that allows EMS to extricate a patient up or down the stairs safely. Some of these devices must be carried by two or up to four personnel. Others have a track device that allows the chair to slide down the stairs. The most important pearls for operating a stair chair are to ensure that the patient is tightly secured into the chair. Furthermore, you may want to restrain the patient's wrists to the chair or give the patient something to hold onto so they do not instinctively reach their arms out, potentially causing an accident to you or your partner. See the skills video for more information on how to operate a stair chair. Another common device for moving patients is a longboard, backboard, and scoop stretcher. A longboard and backboard are two names for the same device, which is a long, flat board with carrying slots along the edges. This is commonly used for spinal immobilization. As that procedure is phased out, the backboard is useful for its originally designed purpose, extricating immobile patients from a confined space, like a crushed vehicle. The board can be placed underneath a patient's buttocks and then used as a frictionless surface to pull them out of a space. Otherwise, as an immobilization device, the patient would lie supine with their arms crossed, feet together, head secured on a headbed, and seat belted over their shoulders, across their chest, hips, legs, but never over soft body areas like their abdomen. A scoop stretcher is like a backboard, however it is scooped out to allow the patient to sit in a pocket, whereas a backboard is completely flat. The scoop stretcher can also be broken apart long ways to allow an immobile patient to be scooped up from the ground without having to be moved or log rolled. This is commonly used with patients who have hip or leg fractures. See the skills video for scoop and longboard operation. Lastly, patients may need to be carried by hand depending on the location they're found in and the ability or availability of special extrication devices to you. The common method for carry is the arm and leg carry or the four person extremity lift. This is when personnel carry the patient under each arm and under each leg. Be sure to use caution on brittle bone patients, as fractures may occur. It is recommended that you lift at the patient's knees and under their armpits. Sheets and blankets are useful improvised extrication devices. You may use a sheet to drag the, a patient across the ground out of an area or to transfer a patient from one area to another, commonly upon arrival at the hospital, say from your ambulance stretcher to the hospital bed. See the skills video for common sheet drags and person carries. These skills are common testing stations during certification and licensing exams. 
Be sure to watch the skills videos and practice these techniques until you're expert at it.